Good evening. Happy Halloween. My name is Jonathan Skinner and I would like to talk to you briefly about the topic of dark tourism, an adjective plus tourism, perhaps a form of niche tourism, and ask questions such as why are people attracted to death, disaster, atrocity? All of the images here are my own and the, most of the experiences are my own, except for one image. So this is Ground Zero in New York uh, after 9-11, uh, where there was the atrocity of the Twin Towers. And we have a tourist standing alone watching the reconstruction of the site as an empty memorial space. It's interesting that we refer to it as a ground zero, a ground of nothing, a ground that echoes of Hiroshima. Jackie Feldman, the anthropologist in the States, American anthropologist, writes about ground zero as, a, as an idea, as a trope. I'd like to suggest here in looking briefly at dark tourism, taster in an introduction to this topic, this concept that is disputed and does have problematic ethics, that <clears throat> people are attracted to these places like moths to the light or counter moths because these places are counterpoints. They are the boundaries between civilization and barbarianism. They are the boundaries, the points between life and death. And in coming close to them, we are able to reflect upon our mortality, to rehearse our, our our deaths um, to talk uh, about uh, Phil Stone's concept. So let me introduce dark tourism and try and do it sensitively, even though it is Halloween. So the next picture is tourism uh, in the Maze Longkesh in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Uh, this is the H blocks. This is where uh, paramilitaries of either persuasion, unionist nationalists were incarcerated. Uh, it was built by Maggie Thatcher with a distinctive H block design for a number of the complexes. And it has a history of uh, oppression, surveillance, uh, brutality, murder, um, and escape and it is disputed as a place whereby the the unionists want it raised to raise the maze to have the the grounds obliterated as though it's another empty space and the nationalists want to turn it into a shrine to the cause where um, hunger strikers such as Bobby Sands lost their lives, were killed, died, uh, depending upon your politics uh, in this place as a, a sitting member of parliament. It's interesting to ask the question, why would someone want to view these destinations? What is the attraction? Um, what do they get out of it? Is it a buzz? Is it excitement? Is it a thrill? Is it danger? Is it nostalgia? Is it grief? Uh, is it schadenfreude uh, for the other, for difference? Is it a commemoration of the, the past? There aren't specific answers to these questions uh, and it depends how far back in time we want to go. The maze is a, a contemporary example. The issues are alive and around us it's currently closed to tourist visitors because of the politics in this destination. And yet, if we go back several thousand years to the Colosseum, where Emperor Trajan had 100 day killing sprees, 9,000 gladiators, 10,000 animals um, slaughtered, a, a blood fest, and yet we're so far away from this, we're at the remove that it's uh, become an iconic um, tourist marker and attraction for the city of Rome. And we put this on the cover of our book um, that I co-edited with Dimitrios Theodosopoulos 
great expectations, imagination and anticipation in tourism. Uh, the, the question here is, are these tourists sitting outside the Colosseum, are they dark tourists in the same manner in which the visit to, to the Maze prison is a dark tourist? As though perhaps dark tourism is a 20th century or contemporary phenomenon, depending upon the mindset of the tourists, how they apprehend the destination. The further back in time we go, the, the weaker the claim that it's a dark tourist destination, potentially, as though the, the temporality of this um, concept um, diminishes. Here you have two images, one kindly donated by my colleague and friend, Magdalena Benaskovic, um, of uh, overview, overlooking Chernobyl, Papiriat, the, the site for the 1986 radioactive um, disaster that has now become a radio attractive destination for, for many tourists uh, who don't spend too long in the, the, in the place because of the high levels of radioactivity. But, but these are tourists that deliberately want to put themselves into uh, a risky scenario to have a frisson of danger about their tourist encounter. They're not the tourists that want to go on the beach for the sun, sand, sea, sangria, sex uh, experience. These are tourists that go for an edgy experience, come back to that concept. And the second picture by myself is from the island of Montserrat in the Eastern Caribbean, where there's a volcanic um, disaster, an ongoing uh, eruption of the Superior Hills from the, the mid 1990s to, to present days. Uh, and the, the south of the island where the capital Plymouth is and where I was, I was, I was living and working as a postgraduate student in anthropology, it's now become a, a, a danger zone, an exclusion zone where you have temporary uh, access and it's through different gradations of, of entrance to the place. Most of it uh, in the capital is monitored by the police and the Montserrat Volcano Observatory. And you have to have lines of sight and lines of exit to the capital that's buried under several meters of pyroclastic mud flow um, to, to exit and evacuate should the, the, the eruptions um, gain in severity and potentially um, over, overrun the, the, the destination again. Here is an image of a tourist um, being shown around um, the Montserrat uh, Springs Hotel on the periphery of Plymouth by tour guide who is showing the before and after of the devastation of the volcano from the hotel swimming pool. He's showing the photograph of uh, the landscape as it was and then the landscape as it is where nature has reclaimed it and the tourist is taking a photograph of it. So dark tourism is very visual. It relies upon semiotics, uh, the science of science in our ocular centric, um, ocular centric um, sort of dominance to, to what we see. That's the, the experience is very visual, very graphic. Um, and yet the responses from the tourist might be quite visceral, might be stomach churning. And here you have the, the reclamation of nature, perhaps. Some tourists visit this destination to see the, the awesome power of natural forces, plate tectonics, or the awesome natural uh, sublime powers of the divinity. Um, is this nature reclaiming it? Is this a post-apocalyptic type of landscape? Are the tourists that visit here Apocaholics, to, to use the, the work of, of, of Brown. <clears throat> Certainly there's a sense of difference, of otherness, of a contrast with the everyday that the tourist is getting. And they might be returning to the safety of the, the north of the island um, for their, their evening. So their, um, <clears throat> their visit <clears throat> to the exclusion zone is temporary. It's temporal, takes back in time. It asks subjective questions. What if I had been there? What if I had been 
um, caught up in this? How would I have reacted? Would I have survived? What is to survive? What is my, my death? My death, how is my mortality um, going to be? Is perhaps this a rehearsal for one's mortality? So these are the, the meditations um, that you get through dark tourism as a mediating concept to return to Phil Stone's idea. The tourist gazing upon the ongoing volcanic eruptions and, and walking across a landscape that has changed profoundly um, ontologically in the sense that the being of, of the ground has shifted um, from its usual roadside markers. This is a sort of a natural ruins to um, link to Tim Edensor's <coughs> ideas of the, the tourists um, having to pick their way through the, this, this landscape. You can't sort of traverse it um, in, a, in a straight line as they're walking down the street. So one's attention is, is heightened. One's senses are more aware. Um, you're, you're alert to any signs of, of, of difference or potential um, disaster. Academics have written about dark tourism. <clears throat> um, myself, I've, I've edited a volume, Writing the Dark Side of Travel, that tries to look at dark journeys that people go through, whether they're quite literally sort of these types of um, tourist experiences or more figuratively through cartoons, through um, time out, through people's um, remove from society to collect themselves, through to <clears throat> different types of um, tourist visitors to, to Rwanda, to, um, to look at um, places where there have been um, atrocities and eth ethnocides. Um, commit and crimes committed and how how does someone write about this how does one account for uh, life after the holocaust is there a, a form of life after these devastating the inhuman um, act, acts of atrocity is it possible to to write about it or to paint about it paint it or, or draw cartoons joe sacco here on Sarajevo, the cover of the, the, the book. Stephen Ling talks about edge work in that uh, there's a sociology of risk taking. People like to take risks because they are living in a safe society, or uh, they were before COVID um, came in the sense that we're, we're all risk takers in a, in a uh, COVID 19 um, condition, pandemic times. <clears throat> and yet people used to go out mountaineering, skydiving, and perhaps it's because we're, we're wrapped in cotton wool and they want to have this edgy experience to feel more alive and to get the adrenaline pumping, to face death, to conquer death, and then to return to their home, but re-energized, re rejuvenated. Um, reanimated, perhaps. Phil Stone and, and Richard Sharpley have written about the darker side of travel, the theory and practice of dark tourism, uh, and have contributed immensely to the, the theoretical side to this concept. Um, and I'll turn to, to their, um, their concepts <clears throat> in a second. In terms of the origins of the, the term, dark tourism. Uh, it was coined at the turn of the, the century by John Lennon and Malcolm Foley. And they suggest that it's a concept that, that came about uh, as we were on the cusp of postmodern times. And it's associated with late 20th century thought uh, and 20th century mass, uh, mass disasters, mass atrocities, post-World War I, post-World War II, nuclear age where where everything has grown in scale um, and we have the the means to to visit the these places which we, we haven't had before to visit the slums of mumbai to visit the icbm uh, cold war missile in its silo in arizona to visit 
the bridge that, that Princess Diana um, lost her life um, under. And to even recreate that experience in a black S-class Mercedes Benz and to drive through the tunnel past the site where, where, she, where she, was, she, she was hit and to, to, to go through the tunnel and to, to reappear on the other side. Others might recreate and revisit the, the, the site where JFK was, was shot and to take selfies at the, the X's on the, the road or to visit the, the destination um, that the Titanic was, was, was seeking to, 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 to get to in New York or the, the destination or the place where it, it sank or the place where it was built um, in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Where there's a Titanic museum, but with very few artifacts from the actual um, ship. Perhaps it's a symptom of our anxiety ridden society, Lennon and Foley suggest. Anthony Seaton takes issue with this contemporary nature to dark tourism and suggests that there has always been a form of dark tourism. A, a, a meditation upon death, and that it, it came, came out of Judeo-Christian um, traditions. And this um, has been picked up by Phil Stone as a mediating upon mortality in contemporary times, uh, and that Anthony Seaton would suggest you can find, going back to executions, gladiatorial um, contests, to uh, witchcraft duckings, to people taking souvenirs at these, these places. Uh, and that this has always been some sort of attraction, um, in particular those following that, that, the, the Christian death cult um, with its obsession upon death and, and life and rebirth. Richard sharply suggests that there's a, there's a spectrum of dark tourism, that there are different shades to this darkness, depending upon how it's been commodified. Uh, if the, the lightest, the lighter, the dark, um, the darker and, and the darkest. And that these shades, these gradations can be fitted onto different destinations. So for example, the lightest might be um, the London dungeon, where you get a sort of entertainment, um, sort of fear of um, things happening to you in the, in the dark. Uh, a lighter place, Père Lachaise's uh, visit to see Jim Morrison's grave, a dark tourist destination, um, the Mark Boland crash site near the University of, of Roehampton, that's still a, a contemporary shrine, to the more darker um, destinations, such as 9-11 perhaps, to the darkest of them all. Uh, many consider Auschwitz-Birkenau the Ur destination. Um, where millions were uh, killed by the Nazis and by sort of strange equivalents, we have millions visiting this place for education, uh, if you're Polish school children or Israeli um, school children. Jackie Feldman has written uh, very uneasy, unsettling uh, accounts about how um, the, the Israeli school children react to the, these visits with the, that they're sent around the, the death camps of Poland um, to return to Israel as um, citizens of a, of a, of a post-Holocaust community struggling to maintain a Jewish identity in, a, in an increasingly embittered um, Middle East. If we look briefly at Anthony Seaton, um, in, uh, to give an example of what he refers to as thanatourism, death and tourism, uh, to take issue with the, the, the contemporary nature of dark tourism. We can see, for example, um, the Battle of Waterloo, 1815, um, June, um, a battle between the Duke of Elephant, uh, Duke of Wellington and Napoleon, um, here pictured by William Sadler, sort of a contemporary um, canvas of British infantry. Uh, on the hills, there were aristocrats watching the, um, the, the slaughter 
the, the between the different armies, the, the French, the English, the Prussians, um, Bavarians. Um, and as soon as the, the battles were over, people were picking over the, the debris for souvenirs. Um, they, there were tickets that you could buy from neighboring cities to, to, to get a ride over to the, bat, the former battlefield um, to pick up your souvenirs to return home. Um, the breastplate that a cannon had gone through, the um, horse's hoof that could be turned into uh, a cigarette or cigar tray, um, the, the bullets that, that could be kept as souvenirs, lodestones to this um, dramatic event, one of disaster and, and, and human atrocity. So Seaton's point is that it's not a late 20th century phenomenon. Uh, and here we can see it, it, it um, pictured. In, in closing, in this brief taster, uh, I'll talk more in more detail uh, and use other images um, in a private lecture. Uh, I, I wanted to add some criticisms and some conclusions. Chris Rojek suggests that this form of black spot tourism draws our attention away from the living. For example, Auschwitz-Birkenau uh, is uh, more than just a death camp. Uh, the immediate community are having to live uh, without discotheques, without public uh, signs of entertainment to maintain the, um, the drama, the, the, the atmosphere of, of the, the destination for tourists. So there's a sense that, that this dark tourism overrides the present and the contemporary. In, with people looking back in time to um, the, 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 the unfortunate um, circumstances. Bauman and Pizzallo, uh, who uh, engaged a lot with um, post Hurricane Katrina um, tours of Los, uh, New Orleans, write about the concept dark tourism as being a very awkward metaphor because it is not politically correct. It has negative valence to it, as though darkness is connected with um, negativity, with death, disaster, and atrocity. And that the darker something is, um, the worse it, it, it's, it's, it's signifying. And this is akin to the cowboy with the, the dark hat being the bad cowboy, the cowboy with the white hat being the good cowboy, as though lighter forms of um, tourism are, are whiter and darker forms of tourism are blacker. And that this has a, a, a not the politically correct, a potential sort of not, not racist, but it, 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 it has poor connotations that, that some of the theorists have not really thought through, the implications behind this thought. Nigel Rapport has written about his visit to Auschwitz-Birkenau uh, and, and how he was seeking a, an authentic experience, and yet his experience had been overlaid by the, the mediatization of the dark tourist destination. Instead of seeing the death camp as he wanted to see it, as a memorial to um, relations, it, it, he saw Schindler's List, the, the film version, and that was what was in, in his head. And similarly, I've taken students around uh, the maze long cache in, uh, off, outside of Belfast, and they've walked through one of the remaining H blocks um, looking at the prison cells and not seeing the prison cells, but they've seen Steve McQueen's film, The Hunger, um, and they've seen replayed um, extracts in their heads, perhaps role played some of the circumstances uh, in, in their visit. So are, are we still seeing these places as they were? How authentic 
is a dark tourist destination. If it's a tourist destination, perhaps it's lost its authenticity or it's become stage managed. Um, it has a staged authenticity to invoke Dean McCannell to some extent. Philip Gurevich suggests that, that these places are not amusement parks for tourists, but abusement parks for tourists. These are parks of death. And yet some of these destinations are closer to death, disaster, atrocity than others. So for example, a visit to the Washington Holocaust Museum is associated um, with death because of objects, because of the, the topic. Um, whereas visiting Auschwitz-Birkenau, uh, as Rapport did, is a place of death. As though there's a distinction between the two. It's also very critical of the cinematization of um, the shooting of um, prisoners. And every day those prisoners are being screamed as being shot. And you, um, you can't hear the screams, but, but they are being screamed again and again and again. And that there is something unethical and uneasy in this, um, in this experience that deliberately tries to trigger emotions in the, the visitor. And the Washington Holocaust Museum, you, your ticket gives you an identity to a person. And the narrative through the experiences that uh, is, is led by um, this anticipation of does the person survive or, or not? What happens to them? So dark tourism is, is an uneasy, unsettling concept, a difficult concept, uh, awkward, problematic, um, ethically dubious. Uh, and an odd conjunction. Uh, it, it's a, a, a photo negative on, on humanity that provides us with insights into modernity, capitalism and mortality. So it's, it's a, a, a difficult topic to engage with, um, but it's one that, that allows us to comment on important themes in society as anthropologists, as sociologists uh, and as tourism scholars. We'll explore them in, in a lot more detail uh, with a, a, a lot of collected images from my uh, uh, travels, as well as from the work of my colleagues uh, in the, the wider lecture. Thank you.